ഫീമെയിൽ റീപ്രൊഡക്റ്റീവ് സിസ്റ്റം കൺസിസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് എ പെയർ ഓഫ് ഓവറീസ് റൈറ്റ് സൈഡ് ഓവറി ആൻഡ് ലെഫ്റ്റ് സൈഡ് ഓവറി ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ എ പെയർ ഓഫ് ഫെലോപ്യൻ ട്യൂബ്സ് ഓർ യൂട്രൈൻ ട്യൂബ്സ് യൂട്രസ് ആൻഡ് വെജൈന Ovaries are the female gonads located in the pelvic cavity attached to the broad ligament of the uterus. The peritoneal fold covering the ovary is called as mesovarium. The oogenesis that is the formation, maturation and development of oocytes that happens in the ovaries. The ovaries performs endocrine function also that is the secretion of certain hormones like progesterone, estrogen let us learn what are the parts of the ovary so first part germinal epithelium the germinal epithelium is seen at the surface of the ovary so the surface of the ovary is covered by a single layer of cuboidal epithelium so here in this picture you can appreciate this is the outer surface area of the ovary which is lined by a single layer of cuboidal cells This cuboidal epithelium is called as germinal epithelium. In fact, this term is a misnomer because this layer does not give rise to any oocytes in future. And this layer will be continuing with the peritoneum of the ovary that is called as mesovarium. Next layer is tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea is a thin connective tissue layer that is lying just inner to the germinal epithelium. So let us have a look at this picture. This is the germinal epithelium. Inside that, this is the area where tunica albuginea is seen. Next part is the cortex. The cortex lies inner to the tunica albuginea and this is the peripheral portion of the ovary. So here, this is the area of tunica albuginea. Again inside that, this portion is called as the cortex of the ovary. So this is the peripheral zone and this is the inner zone that we will learn later that is the medulla. So outer cortex and inner medulla respectively. The stroma of the cortex is made up of connective tissues and the cells called as stromal cells. In this stroma of the cortex ovarian follicles of various stages of development can be seen that is primordial follicles, primary, secondary and graphene follicles. further corpus luteum and corpus albicans etc are seen inside this cortical region next is medulla medulla is the core portion of the ovary that consists of fibroelastic connective tissue embedded with blood vessels and nerves so in this picture this is the medullary region so here you can see these are the blood vessels and fibroelastic tissue also is seen this is the portion of hilum of the ovary through which the blood vessels nerves lymphatics everything will be entering to the ovaries now let us learn the details of each follicles In the cortical region of the ovary, we can see the follicles of various age. These are all in developing stages. So these are the primordial follicles, primary follicles, secondary follicles and the graphene follicle or matured follicles. The graphene follicle will undergo a process called as ovulation. This will get ruptured and the ovum will will be released to the peritoneal cavity further after the ovulation this graphene follicle will be converted to corpus luteum and gradually it will be converted or shrinking into corpus albicans let us learn the detailed structure of each follicles the first to learn is the primordial follicle so structurally primordial follicle consists of the primary oocyte which is surrounded by a single layer of flattened epithelium so this single layer of flattened epithelium this covering we can call as follicular cells so this is 
modified stromal cells. These follicular cells are formed by the modifications of the stromal cells. And remember these primordial follicles are comparatively smaller and most numerous in number. So just within the tunica albuginea we can see more number of primordial follicles which are very smaller. Its diameter will be around 20 to 25 micrometer. These primordial follicles are con getting converted to primary follicles. Remember, primary follicles are structurally different. Initially in the primordial follicle, we have seen flattened epithelium, but in the primary follicle, these flattened epithelial cells are converted into columnar epithelium. And gradually that will get proliferated. And remember, now the diameter also will be changing around 50 to 80 micrometer. These changes are happening after puberty. Till puberty, the primordial follicles are remaining as primordial follicles. Only after puberty, these changes are happening, that is conversion to primary follicles. And here, the oocyte will be surrounded by zona pellucida. So what is this zona pellucida? So oocyte and follicular cells secrete a gel-like glycoprotein layer, which is surrounding the oocyte. So the oocyte is surrounded by a gel-like glycoprotein material layer. This is called as zona pellucida. So this is also another difference between primordial and primary follicles. So in this picture we can clearly see this is the primary follicle. A very thin layer of zona pellucida also can be seen here. And remember, the follicular cells are getting converted to granulosa cells now that will get proliferated and multiple layers of cells can be seen. Next is secondary follicle. The granulosa cells start to proliferate and become compactly arranged. So already we have seen the granulosa cells are proliferating and multiple layers are formed here and they will be tightly packed or compactly arranged. Next important change happening is granulosa cells will start to secrete the follicular fluid that is called as liquid folliculate and this fluid filled cavity will appear within this follicle. A large cavity will appear. This is called as antrum or antral cavity. Now the diameter will be further increased and it will be around 125 micrometer in diameter. This graphene follicle or mezzo follicle. The antral cavity will get enlarged further here in the graphene follicle and the total diameter of the follicle will be further increased. It will attain around 10, 10 millimeter and the oocyte will be shifting towards the periphery of the follicle. What is corona radiata? So the cells which are next to the zona pellucida which will cover the oocyte which is very close to the zona pellucida is called as corona radiata and further the stromal cells can be divided into two cumulus euphoricus and discus proliquerous. Cumulus euphoricus means the cells which are surrounding the oocyte. These cells are called as cumulus euphoricus which are outer to the corona radiata. And the discus proliquerous means this will connect to the follicles. The granulosa cells that attach the oocyte to the wall of the follicle that is called as discus proliquerous. Theca interna and theca externa. The theca interna, the surrounding stromal cells now differentiate into two layers that is theca interna and theca externa. The theca interna consists of highly vascular cells here and the theca externa will be further in the outer aspect. These are showing presence of some smooth muscles and collagen fibers. These are the theca externa cells and here will be the theca interna cells. So the theca interna cells are secreting certain hormones 
that is performing the endocrine function, the theca interna. What are atritic follicles? For each menstrual cycle, usually only one follicle will reach maturity and that only will get ovulated. But remember the other maturing follicles which are not at all undergoing ovulation. But at various stages of development that will start to get degenerated. This process of regression and ultimate degeneration and disappearance of follicle that will get converted into follicular atresia and these are called as atretic follicles. What is ovulation? The rupture of matured graphene follicle and release of ovum to the peritoneal cavity. This process is denoted as ovulation. So after ovulation, the graphene follicle will get converted into corpus luteum or yellow body. So the blood vessels and stromal cells invert into the granulosa cells and these granulosa cells are getting enlarged and the shape will be changing to a polyhedral shape. These polyhedral shape cells are getting filled with yellow pigment called as lutein. That's why we are calling as corpus luteum, yellow body. And the fate of corpus luteum, if you consider, that can be getting converted to corpus luteum of menstruation or corpus luteum of pregnancy. If fertilization happens, this corpus luteum will get converted into corpus luteum of pregnancy. And if fertilization did not happen, that will be getting converted to corpus luteum of menstruation. So that means if the ovum is not fertilized, that will be getting converted into corpus luteum of menstruation and if it is getting fertilized that will be getting converted to corpus luteum of pregnancy what are corpus albicans when the corpus luteum is getting degenerated the lutein cells become swollen and thin and some scar of connective tissue will be present at that area. So these dead lutein cells now will be converted to corpus albicans or the corpus albicans persist in the cortex for several months. Medical conditions related to the ovaries, polycystic ovaries or PCOD or polycystic ovarian disease. So here we can see within the ovaries we can see multiple fluid filled cavities can be seen. And the cl main clinical features are menstrual irregularities and hormonal imbalance. So this condition, polycystic ovarian disease.